So, depending on when you're watching this video, you probably just updated your current iPhone to iOS 16, or you picked up an iPhone 14 that came pre-installed with iOS 16, and now you're wondering what new features came with that iOS 16 update. If you guys do wanna watch Miles' video on the top features of iOS 16, I'll link that down in the description below for you guys to check out. But in this video, we're gonna be talking about 15 hidden features that nobody's really talking about with iOS 16 that will improve your day-to-day -day life. So without further ado, here are 15 hidden features of iOS 16. Let's talk about it. So as we go along this video, leave some comments down below of your favorite feature or some features that you didn't know of or something that you learned brand new in this video. But let's get started with feature number one. And if you guys are gonna take anything away from this video, this is the thing that you guys should do immediately when you update to iOS 16. So in iOS 16, haptic keyboard feedback finally came to iPhones. So this is something that Android phones have had for a very long time. And even with third-party keyboards that you download from the App Store on the iPhone, you can actually get this feature. But now for the first time in iOS 16, Apple's bringing haptic feedback on the keyboard natively on the iPhones. And I know this doesn't sound too crazy, but I'm telling you, turn it on, and over time, you're gonna feel like, wow, how did I not live with this before? Because previously, whenever you typed on the keyboard, you could turn on the sound to get the clicks, but the actual haptic feedback wasn't there. So now with this new feature, as long as you toggle it on, every single time you touch any key on the keyboard, no matter what app you're in, whether it's a native iMessaging app or Notes app or a third-party application that nobody's ever heard of, as long as you're using the native keyboard, the haptic feedback will be turned on, and it's a wonderful feature, especially on a virtual keyboard like the iPhone. So that is feature number one, the haptic feedback on iOS 16, which is absolutely wonderful. So features number two and three have to do with the Photos application. So the first one is actually a great space saver, especially for somebody who's constantly duplicating photos or has a lot of screenshots of the same thing. It's a new merge folder. So what Apple's doing is, you know, with their power and with their AI in the background, they're going through your entire photo library and seeing which two photos are the same exact image and they'll put them in this folder to let you decide if you wanna merge them or just keep them as they are or just fully delete those images if you want to. So by merging them, it allows you to save a lot more space on your iPhone. And as you can see, I have a bunch of photos that are needing to be merged in order for me to save some space because they're just duplicate photos of photos that I already have. And then feature number three inside of the Photos app is a new hidden folder and the recently deleted folder. The recently deleted folder has always been there, but this is the first time that Apple's now Face ID locked it or Touch ID locked it. And then same thing for the hidden folder. So now by default, you have this hidden folder in there that you can add whatever photos you want in there. And it is locked with the biometric version of either Face ID or Touch ID, depending on which phone you have. So those are features number two and three inside of the Photos application. Features number four and five have to do with the Notes application. So as you guys saw, I think it was iPadOS 13 or maybe iPadOS 14, we got the Quick Notes feature, which allows us to slide from the bottom right or bottom left with your Apple Pencil and start taking notes down. So the Quick Note feature actually came to iOS 16. Now it's not in the same way, it doesn't work with the pencil obviously, and you can't bring it up from the bottom right or bottom left, but you can actually go into your control center, add the Quick Notes toggle in your control center, swipe from the top right of your iPhone, click on that Quick Note, and then you're right inside of a quick note. So if you're ever in a situation, maybe in Safari, or maybe you're watching a video or something where you need to jot down a quick note, just pull down on the control center, turn on the quick note feature, type whatever you have to type, and you're good to go. And whatever audio you're listening to, if you are taking notes, will not turn off, so you're good to go if you are listening to something and actively taking a quick note. And then the next thing in the Notes app is the ability to lock individual notes. As you're noticing here, locking a quick note does not actually work. So if you have a quick note that you want to actually lock, you might want to copy and paste whatever content is in that quick note and put it into a regular note. But inside of a regular note, if you go to the top right corner, click on those three dots and then press down that lock button, and then you have two options. Your two options are to lock it with the same passcode that's on your iPhone or choose a completely different password to whatever you see fit with whatever passcode you want to put on that actual note. And then after that, if you want to unlock it, you type in your passcode. And then the second prompt you get is if you want to enable Face ID. So after that, if you use the passcode unlock of your whatever passcode you have on your iPhone and then unlock that note, then Face ID can be enabled to unlock that note moving forward, which I think is a great addition. If you have anything secretive or any maybe passwords in there, probably not the best place to put passwords, but you can now lock it natively inside of the Notes app. And as we go along, I'm trying to bundle these together. That's why now these next two, so features six and seven, have to do with Siri. So the first one is actually a little bit hit or miss. It's not perfect, but it's a step in the right direction. So Apple's Siri dictation has gotten much, much better over the years. 
probably still not on par with Google Assistant because that one's been you know in the forefront for a very very long time with Siri dictation it tries to now add punctuations for you naturally so normally if you are reciting or dictating your voice with Siri you actually have to say whether it's a period or a comma or a colon semicolon for Siri to add that in that translation now it tries to understand your speech understand your inflections and how you are speaking to add commas add periods so if you have a totally separate thought it'll add a period if you have something as common as like the sentence that I'm using where it's like multiple things that I'm listing out obviously commas are going to be needed to separate that list so that is added in there now it's again it's not 100% I wouldn't count on it to work 100% of the time because as you saw the first few sentences and words that I tried to spell out didn't add a period but if you got a little bit more obvious with the dictation then it did work and the next thing with Siri is the ability to change how long Siri listens to you so normally when you turn on Siri or activate her or whatever the case may be there's a certain threshold that Siri will actually listen in order to see if you're actually saying something to her or if you just pressed her by accident so with this feature if you go into your settings go into accessibility go into Siri you'll see a menu where it says Siri pause time and you have three options so you have the default the longer and the longest and again it doesn't tell you how long it's going to actually be listening to you but you can change that setting to whatever you see fit I like to keep it on default just in case but if you do want her to listen to you for a longer period of time by all means go for it this next one I want to talk about is actually inside of iMessage. Now I'm terrible at responding to text messages to begin with or iMessages. So being able to go into a message, see what somebody sent me and then mark it as unread is amazing. So very simple feature, just swipe to the right of whatever message has already been read for you to mark it unread and then you'll get your notification badge and that blue dot to make sure that it shows as unread inside of iMessage. So that's a new feature of iMessage which I'm very happy about. And then with iOS 14, I believe it was, maybe it was iOS 15, Apple introduced live text. Now live text has gotten very, very good as it's gone on. And with iOS 16, it's no different. We got the ability to have live text inside of video. Again, check Miles' video in the description below to check that out. So with live text, that actually added Apple the ability to have a converter built in natively throughout the entire OS, which is beautiful to see. So for instance, if somebody sends you a text message with something or temperature in Celsius, you just long press on the Celsius and it'll convert it into Fahrenheit, into Kelvin, and into Celsius again, it's there also. And then same thing goes with photos. So as you can see with this screenshot of the weather application, I have it in Fahrenheit, I long press on that 82 degrees, and then it shows me what it is in Celsius and Kelvin again, which is a beautiful thing to have. And this happens with actual translation as well, as you can see, it happens with any kind of metric measurement. So if you're measuring in teaspoons and you need to go to gallons or things like that, so it's a built-in converter natively in the OS, which is gonna be very, very useful moving forward. This next one was an actually sneaky one, which is gonna be very, very cool. So we live in a world now where you can buy preset LUTs and different editing packages and things like that. But now this has actually come natively into iOS, which is kind of cool. So let's say you have an image that you edited natively on the Photos application and you like how it turned out, right? You like the aesthetic, you like the look. You can now copy exactly what that edit was and move it to another photo. So the way you do this is go into a photo that's been edited already inside of the photos application, click on the three dots on the top right, click on copy edit, go to any other image, whether it has been edited or whether it's not edited, then click on those three dots again on the top right and then press paste edit. And then you can see that that photo takes on all the different variables of the previous edit as it did before. So again, if you have a edit that you really, really love and you like the look of it and you wanna put that look throughout your entire photo library to start pasting that edit onto different photos inside of the photos app. So another thing that came with iOS 16, which I actually was not a big fan of, with Spotlight Search, the way that you would activate Spotlight Search, which I use a ton, is by swiping down. That's how it was with iOS 15 and lower. This year, you can still swipe down to bring up Spotlight Search, but now there's actually a little search button, or a little search kind of toggle on your home screen, which takes up where those little dots used to be to indicate how many home pages you had. But I actually don't like this. So you can actually get rid of this search button and still just swipe down for Spotlight, which I think is more than enough because it's a simple one swipe action. But to disable this little search button, just go into your settings, go into your home screen, and then under show Spotlight, just turn that toggle off and it'll remove the search button. And then Spotlight again will still swipe down to search. The next addition is actually inside of the settings and it requires you know some sort of Bluetooth Apple headphone in order for this to work. So I'm using the AirPods Pro, which we should be getting the AirPods Pro 2 here very soon. So definitely say subscribe because I got a lot of thoughts on that thing that I want to talk about but with any airpods whether it's the airpods 1 2 3 you know the max the airpods pro the airpods pro 2 you actually get a brand new setting menu inside of the settings when you are connected which makes it just a lot easier to interact with the settings of your airpods pro so all you do is you put your airpods pro in you open up your settings menu and then right there literally right in front of your face you'll see the airpods pro you tap on that and then your entire settings menu and all your customizations and your ear fit test and all that good stuff is right in front of you in the settings application instead of having to dig into the settings 
dig into the Bluetooth, press the I button, then go into your setting. So Apple just brought that up into your face with fewer steps so you have more customization and more access to your AirPods Pro in the settings. Another cool one in the settings is actually inside of your Wi-Fi. So one of the cool things about iOS, especially if you're with another person that has iOS, let's say they came over to your house, you can easily share your password and it's kind of flawless, it's kind of magical for your Wi-Fi password. But Again, if somebody has an Android phone or anything else that isn't an iOS device, then it's a little bit tougher. So now what Apple did is they actually added the password of your Wi-Fi in the Wi-Fi settings, which is something that was not there before, which is kind of crazy. So with iOS 15 and below, if you wanted to find out your Wi-Fi password, you have to have it written down somewhere or on the back of your router or your modem or whatever the case may be. But now all you do is you go into your Wi-Fi settings, go to your Wi-Fi, press the little I button, and then with Face ID, it'll pop up the password for your Wi-Fi, and then you can copy and paste that and send it to whoever you need to send that to in order to get them on your Wi-Fi. So feature number 14 has to be the ability to not hang up a phone call with the lock button. So if you guys have ever taken a phone call on an iPhone, which I know is we're doing less and less, you know, especially as we're going into 2023, but if you are on a phone call, if you accidentally press the lock button on your phone, then it hangs up that call immediately. So in order to turn this off, it's very, very easy and it's something that I used to do all the time. Just go into your settings, go into accessibility, go into touch, and then toggle the prevent to end call off. So that is what's gonna let you turn that feature off. So if you press the lock button while on a phone call, it will not hang up the phone. And then the last feature I wanna talk about has to do with all this new home screen stuff. The main thing that I like to do is actually have my main wallpaper be visible like on my lock screen, but then be blurred out on my regular home screen. And that can be done right into your wallpaper settings. So go into your settings, go into wallpapers, and then click on customize. And on the bottom right hand corner, you have this little droplet button. If you press that, it'll blur out whatever image you have on there to the max, which is really, really cool to see. So you'll still have kind of like the background colors of whatever image you had, but it'll be totally blurred out and kind of, it makes it feel like the icons are way more in your face when that is the case. But that is gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, iOS 16 is bringing a lot of new features, which I'm very happy about. It's a lot of tweaks and enhancements that just makes your life a little bit easier. And the one word that I can talk about when it comes to iOS 16 is just full-on customization, and I love that about iOS 16. So if you guys did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know that you made it to the end. And also leave some comments down below of what your favorite feature was that we talked about here today. Were these all new to you? Did you guys update to iOS 16 already? Or are you waiting for the iPhone 14 to come out with iOS 16? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm always very, very curious. And stay subscribed because as you can see, we have iPad OS 16 running in the background, which should be releasing in October. And we're gonna have a full walkthrough on that with its top features. So stay subscribed for content like that. But if you guys made it to the end, click on one of these videos right here. But I'm Fernando, and until next time, I'm out of here. Peace, everybody.